it appears that the the improved rating that Nigeria got in terms of ease of doing business with the World Bank is as a result of the policies that were put in place. How long before we begin to see uh, the impact on the average uh, person who is doing business in Nigeria? We've actually begun to see the impact. We had an impact assessment done and uh, a number of SMEs were polled and, and asked what they feel, you know, are things more transparent, are things faster? Because another thing is the, the speed, the cost of doing business, how many times you have to go to a government agency, the kind of service you're, you're, you're being rendered, the kind of documentation, the amount of documentation you're being asked to present, and all those time wasting, your file going through 17 desks. So I think that the impact has already started because like I said, at least in the last 18 months, We've had tangible reforms that have been implemented. You know we worked through 60-day national action plans, which are accelerators. We've had three. The first one was in February of 2017 to April. And then we had one from October to December, also in 2017. And then we had this year from uh, February to April again of 2018. And we actually announced transparently all the reforms that we hope to, to implement and we tell the public where we are midway, and when we've accomplished, when we completed the reform, we also say, so it's quite easy to track actually. Yeah, and the impact, what I would say is that we actually cater to the SME on the street. Like we cater to small and medium sized enterprises. They are not micro, and they are not larger corporates. Micro are basically informal, and larger corporates, when I say that their issues are more sophisticated, they, Absolutely. You know, yeah. but you know, it's a different demographic. But what we are after is that an SME, say employs five to ten people, doesn't need to know anybody to get a NAFDAQ certification of their product. You should just be able to go online, fill a form, pay the amount that you know what the requirements are, you know, it should be a simple process, as much as possible, remove the rent-seeking opportunities, which are the human contact. And we also encourage private sector to believe in the processes and not to try and circumvent them by calling people that they've always known to sort them out for 5K or something like that. So it's a systemic intervention, and we both sides have to be more disciplined in how we build a system for Nigeria. Because that's really the only way that we'll be able to deepen the reforms and make sure that it's sustainable in the long run. All right, the federal government has a much larger umbrella or roadmap to economic recovery mm -hmm. or a better economy. And that's the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan. What's the role of PEBEC in this? The ERGP uh, came up last year, but it's an amalgamation of a lot of the activities that the federal government had been pushing, and indeed with states, because it's a nationwide economic uh, plan. Uh, the PEBEC had already been on since 2016. And so what it is, is when we put together the plan, it has three pillars. And one pillar, the third pillar is on competitiveness. That's to make sure that we can export competitively, we are productive, uh, the procedures are in place for us to be able to deliver jobs and create wealth for the country. Now, under that competitiveness section is divided into two parts. And the first part is, of course, power, and then also roads and rail. So that's the hard infrastructure. Two parts, everybody knows the power problem, and there's a lot of work going into that. Roads and rail, just access to markets, access to ports, there's a lot of work going on in that area as well. And the second part, for the very first time, is soft infrastructure. A federal government paying attention as a whole, a country paying attention as a whole to ease of doing business, to soft things, regulatory, legislative, procedural, transparency, uh, all those irritants that make it very difficult for SMEs to thrive. And we know why we want SMEs to thrive. They employ about 90%. Of, of jobs, uh, well, about 80% of jobs, but at least 90% of companies in this country are SMEs, and they contribute just under 50% of the GDP. So it's actually enlightened self-interest to make sure that SMEs are comfortable and can thrive. And we know that the difficulty of doing business in Nigeria has a lot to do with the, the contact, when people have to 
come in contact with regulators, when people have to come in contact with uh, procedures dealing with the government and the friction that, that happens there. So that's what we're trying to address and reform, to make sure that that's actually very good service delivery, where we are working and working with platforms like Servicom. We have a web-based feedback application to make sure that private sector are able to deliver. It's called Perrector's Report, uh, to make sure that they're able to deliver feedback and to raise complaints. And there's a 72-hour response time uh, for the MDAs, about nine of them on the platform right now. So it's a whole intervention. I haven't told you that we also partner with the state governments through the National Economic Council. So all the governors are on board and the FCT have replicated this uh, process of reforming, working in partnership with the MDAs. Because we don't dictate, we brainstorm together and we look at the processes. So the way that the Enabling Business Environment Secretariat works is that if we take an issue like um, trading across borders, we invite into a room reform champions from say six agencies that are involved in a particular process and we all break down the task and see where the problems are, where the pain points are, where is the delay. It could sometimes just be a simple misunderstanding between two government agencies. One person requires one documentation and the private sector is sometimes caught in between. You can't move on with something until somebody else has done this. So we discuss as one government and we agree. So the executive order speaks about one government. That's now being able to share, work with photocopies, you know, you know, work with your colleagues as opposed to making the private sector dance around to, you know, confirm information and all that. So those are some of the simple things, changing the way we work as government. And that has begun to deliver a lot of ease. It takes a lot of stress off private sector because then they know that government is coordinated by talking to each other and you have single interface where at the ports the Nigerian Customs Service coordinates all the agencies to inspect a container. At the airports it's the same thing. Simple administrative things that we could change to make it easier, more cost effective and more timely for businesses to operate. Quite recently, Pebec paid a courtesy call to the Bank of Industry. Um, I know you work with quite a number of MDAs. Um, how strategic has the Bank of Industry been to your operation? The Bank of Industry has been a partner to the PEBEC from the very beginning. Um, in the area of getting credit, we have uh, come, we, we came that day to visit Bank of Industry to say, look, we need your support, not just Bank of Industry, uh, Development Bank, Bank of Agriculture. We need your support to lend to SMEs. So the CEO actually took us through some of the products that Bank of Industry has. There's some as basic as for, I think it's youth corporates, you just need two signatures to be able to get some access to credit. And just things like that, making them know that SMEs need this. That day we paid a courtesy call to ask Bank of Industry to patronize the National Collateral Registry that I spoke to you about, the, the legislation that the National Assembly enacted last year so that SMEs can use their movable property to access credit. So accessing credit is one of the biggest issues that uh, SMEs talk about. But Bank of Industry to PEBEC has been beyond that, helping us with technical support. Our offices in Lagos are in their building. So when you have a number of agencies supporting an initiative, you have a very good synergy, and then you're able to, Bank of Industry also, of course, Suppose the, the Office of the Vice President, the SME clinics, they go, and then the G program as well. So it, it's been a, a big uh, collaboration that's going quite well. Next week on the program, we'll be taking a more cursory look at PEBEC and some of its priority reform areas and how these reforms are creating a much healthier business ecosystem in the country. Some of PEBEC reform areas include starting a business getting credit, paying taxes and trading across borders. Join us next week to know more about how these affect you. As you have heard on the program today, the Bank of Industry is a strategic partner to PEBEC, especially under the Getting Credit Index. At the Bank of Industry, getting access to credit is much more easier than you have ever known. Knock at their door today by visiting any of their branches closest to you or visit their website at boi.ng. 
With the Bank of Industry, you can apply for loans online. Simply download the BOI SME Loan app from the Google Play Store and follow the instructions. For more information, tweet at me at K-A-Y Alayande and you can watch this as well as previous editions of the show on YouTube.com by simply typing BOI Weekly in the search area. That's our show for today. Many thanks for watching. I'm Kaya Alayande. Bye now.